What's up, guys? Welcome back to the... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Performing for the camera still. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode number three of the podcast that we don't know what this is called. My name is Joshim, and the sexy voice you're going to hear right now is my uh. co-host... I don't know what that dragon breath was, but <laughs> that's my Kevin. Sexy voice. Yeah, Kevin that's Kevin. Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> you said you cued my sexy voice and I said hello, and you're like, what was that? <laughs> that was like a it's, bad. It sounded like you were breathing. I was. I <laughs> was. It's, hey, yeah, that's, that's sexy voice. It's a lot of. I was, hey, I was waiting anyway. for you to give me. I was waiting for you to give me some radio voice, like. Good morning, guys. My name is Kevin X. Gandhi. Oh, it's a it's a breather. It's a breather. Boy. That's cool. Well, thank you, guys. You know, I am Kevin X. Gandhi. Yes, uh, he is. I, I, I appreciate you guys. I'm glad you guys tuned in, and we just wanted to, you know, say a little thank you to everyone. We for, wanted to say the early subs. Yeah. Yes. The the thank you, thank you. The early subs, the early commenters, the early likes. Um, like I've said in the first one, in the first podcast, this is a start of something great. So we appreciate you guys being a part of the community here. And um, I'll let Kevin jump into some shout outs really quickly because again, just to show our appreciation, take it away, my man. Yeah, so for everyone who actually commented, and even if you didn't and you were just kind of watching from afar, we appreciate you. But from the people who actually commented and stuff like Miles, Ryan Ng Films, Jess, Liz, and Steven, oh, we got a couple more. Yep, Ryan Chang, my man, thank you so much. Uh, we got Ticho, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly there. Vince, thank you so much. And um, Brad from My BS Life, thank you so much. And Chris, CL Furlong, appreciate you, my man. I'm actually gonna jump in and answer your question right here. So the question Chris asked was, and I'll pop this on the screen, um, what software did you use for this and how did you pull the podcast slash video together in post? Without getting too technical, um, we have two cameras recording in different locations, New York, Toronto, and um, we have our own separate audios, and I edit on Adobe Premiere Pro. I think you edit on Adobe Premiere Pro yeah. too? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we both edit on Adobe Premiere Pro, and basically what we do is just create a split screen of our video that's this right here, and match up our audios, and do a little color grading, bada bing, bada boom, we are done, and now you're seeing it. Yes, so for are. anyone who doesn't know it's because I, I feel like some people might be like oh how did you guys record this together or like it's like we didn't i actually uh sent we actually send each other the footage and then whoever edits it yeah puts it together so that's kind of yeah. how it is it's not like something that we just record on a stream or whatever or like a zoom maybe people might yeah. think it's like a zoom yeah not nah, this yeah here's a little secret sauce we are on a zoom call so that this feels like a more natural conversation between kevin and i and you guys are just tuning in, right? So we're just trying to go the extra mile and making sure that we make you a part of the conversation while we keep this natural conversation going. Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, I think, I hope that answered your question, Chris. Thank you all so much again for commenting. We love you guys. And yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> Every time he jumps out saying we love you, it just gives me little, little giggles. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but we are going to jump into the first topic of the day. We got a really good show for you guys today. So branding, creative flow, burnout. We'll see how much we can hit and uh, let's get started. So I did want to mention about creative flow and I got a question for you after I sort of like throw some stuff at you. Mm -hmm. um, I always wondered what a creative does and what their creative flow is when they're thinking of an idea and pumping it out to, an, to a video. And a lot of this can definitely be dived in really hard, but we're gonna keep it light just to make sure you guys can understand and still enjoy the process. Um, what what does your creative flow feel like? I'll give you an example of what mine is. Yes, I please. usually because <laughs> because I right before this I was like I have no idea, so you're gonna have to <laughs> set so, me up. So my my flow is is um, I'd like to think pretty simple. Um, if, if, I, if I gain inspiration from something, if I see something, if I hear something, a music, a video, whatever it is, and it just sparks an idea, and I know for a lot of people that might be like, well, what the hell does that even mean? Um, I feel like that's a whole nother video, but realistically speaking, I get an idea and I jot it down immediately, whether it's on my phone, whether it's on my book, and this is my little creative, this is my little creative nugget book, and, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but 
I, <laughs> I, I jot the idea down and when I have some free time to brainstorm a little bit more on how to craft a story, because I'm all about storytelling, um, I jump into it. I create the story. I you know, think of ways to utilize my camera, my lighting, my outfits, my set design. I know it's a lot, but it really isn't that much. Um, mm. Especially when you start it, going through the motions of it. Like, like maybe the first couple of times when you're thinking about it, it's a lot. But then when you start yeah. doing it, if you can start doing videos, yeah. you're like in a groove. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and that's, really what, that's really what the flow is. The flow is, and I, and I think like Matt Diavella said this once, like there's this flow state for a creative where you have this window where you are like in the zone and you're grinding away to make sure you accomplish a certain task. And so idea pops in, I jot it down, I craft a story, and I make sure from crafting the story to like editing, like I don't allow distractions like Instagram, YouTube videos, um, to, to keep me from accomplishing the task. And it all starts with some form of inspiration. And so I'd like to thank Kevin actually for being a huge inspiration for me. And um, whenever we talk, whenever I watch his videos, Peter McKinnon's videos, Matt DiVello's videos, anybody, your, you guys' videos, I get an idea and I just take it from there. So I'm curious to know, Kevin, um, what is your creative flow like when you, because you have a wide variety of things on your channel. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So what's your, what's your like process look like? So this is, it might be surprising to a lot of people, but I actually plan all my videos out a month in advance. So I do two videos a week, which is eight videos a month. Uh, so at the beginning, it's, it's very technical. So I don't know if this counts as creative flow, but uh, the third Sunday of every month, I plan out my videos for the following month. Um, creatively, it, it's just a topic idea. And I think what that does for me creatively is that, let's say I, I have a topic, I don't know, on October or whatever, a Friday in October, and I know it's going to be a Feast Friday or one of the series up until then, leading up to it, because I know what it's going to be. If I watch a food channel or if I go out and I see something, I'm like, OK, I can use this shot or this lighting for Feast Friday. And then it's like because I have like these guidelines, it helps me, I don't know, grab inspiration and have a place to put it. Because Where's sometimes, your place? Yeah, because you, you have a book like this or, I, or is it just like like how do you like how do you like capture your thoughts it's like whatever i it. have on me because sometimes i'm mm. out so i have like google keep because you mm. ever use google keep but then i'll try i have documents on my computer or um an actual notebook where i'll i'll put it to and kind of store it it's like a it's like yeah. a creative bank i don't know if yeah. that makes sense it's I a like creative that. bank i like that creative bank yeah so then like i can always reach into it because like i even have some ideas that i use in my videos now that i've had years ago um it, just in terms of like lighting, nothing too crazy. Like, oh, this kind mm -hmm. of the, the three camera setup or I don't know, I'll use black and white for certain angles just for me to try out and like test out. So I think that is my process. Like I plan stuff, but it gives me enough time to find like creativity and find inspiration because you guys know that stuff, that shit just comes out of nowhere sometimes. And you're like, it could be like three in the morning, you wake up yeah. and then you're like grabbing water yeah. and you're like, whoa. Yeah. And it's like, what? And you're like, this This will be a dope video if I can execute what I'm envisioning right now. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think the process, the, the uh, production process is just that. It's trying to deliver that vision to the audience. In yeah. an entertaining slash educational or Way. whatever your Where, yeah niche whatever is. your style is yeah, yeah for sure and dude that's I'm so like this is actually my first time hearing that from Kevin and I think um, I've it, it's always good it's always fun to hear this from other creatives because everyone's process is different and I think I think when when we talk a lot of times. There's always a little nugget somewhere because yeah, you're like, he's yeah. There's always a little nugget, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And mm. <laughs> and I th I think I think for somebody who's heavy into video, um, and somebody who's heavy into photos, um, inspiration comes from all walks of life. It could be from a conversation, an ad, Completely. a YouTube video, yeah. Your friends, like even just having a conversation with yeah. people or uh, anything. 
I don't read magazines, but before before like uh, finding inspiration from different mediums is mm. is like huge for me. So yeah. like I I don't know if I ever told you this, but a couple of years ago I stopped doing video for like maybe about a two years, a year and a half because I I was it was too much work. Like it it sucked the fun. I got burned out. Yeah. And which is something that we're going to get into uh, yeah. for the next topic after this. But quickly, yeah. I just want to touch up on that. It it completely burnt me out. And yeah. what I did to find it again was I started getting into photography. Like I was like, hey, you know what? Let me maybe if I start doing something else that's creative, like maybe I'll, I'll fall in love with it. Yep. And so I started doing photography. Uh, I went to like this photography Instagram meetup a couple of years ago by this um this feature page called way too ill i don't know if anyone knows but my boy eric he was running it and we we did a photo meetup and it was like all the photographers in toronto met up downtown toronto and we just did a walk like hundreds of us everyone's taking photos of each other we're doing all this cool stuff and i loved it because i was like this is the first time i ever did this like yeah i've never taken any photos i'm taking photos of cn tower i'm taking photos of like the skyline of other people and then as i was going there i told myself he kept like shoot uh like just shoot some video because you want to remember this moment right. after i shot the video like I, I shot just clips of me going down there and and of people i edited it together and then i posted it on my instagram and i tagged way too ill and they're like a huge feature page like right. hundred thousand something whatever mm. and then that guy who runs it saw the video and he was like yo that was me um on the bus on the way there that i'm in your video and he was like, yo, you want to meet up? So then I met up with him. We, you know, became friends. And then I started loving videos again because I remembered, yeah. I remembered what it did. I remembered mm. that it connects people. And like, mm. I was doing it out of just pure fun and I loved it. And then after I was like, wow. So, you know, a way for me to get out of that burnout was to do something else on another medium or yeah finding that and then it made me love it again let's not let's not go too crazy into the burnout yeah yeah i just want to touch on it because i, I right. feel like we're getting we're gonna get into it yeah like we real will. soon we will so but i wanted he, to he mention he mentioned something really good which was it allowed him to connect to people and i feel like the creative flow uh you have to understand when you produce something whether it's a video whether it's a poem you know whatever it is you're putting out um, someone on, on, in some place in this world is connecting with that, whether it's emotionally, whether it's mentally, whether it's, uh, uh, I can't say physically, but they're, they're connecting with it spiritually, emotionally, or mentally. And you have to trust your gut in knowing that um, everything you put out is going to connect with somebody. And if, if you feel comfortable with what you put out, I think this is where the creative flow for me is the most exciting. It's like, it's waiting to connect with the next Kevin. Yeah, it's no, I, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, because, because yeah, this is, ahead. you know, we, we think of numbers a lot and hitting, you know, 500, subs. yeah, 500 yeah. subs and a thousand subs. And it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like having a certain uh, friendships with people, like building it is really important. What kind so. of friendships are we talking about here? Real life friendships. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, I mean, like this, like, um, where you can kind of go beyond, you know, that initial meeting. Like, we met on yeah. YouTube, but, and, yeah. and I still have a lot of people in this YouTube community that it's still strictly just a YouTube friendship. Yeah. But I have a couple other people, like yourself, where yeah. it goes beyond it. Like, I could talk to you about, get it, girl. <laughs> get it girl no <laughs> where it goes beyond so there's yeah there's like maybe a handful of people that i can talk to about things outside of youtube where it's not just strictly that and i think yeah. that's important I, i'm not saying go out there and just keep tell people your whole story yeah you know yeah. but like let them earn it a little bit let them let them work for it and i think yep. that's important for creative flow because those are the ones that you actually that matter in terms of creative yeah. flow you know yeah. when when you're like critique my stuff. Yeah, that helps yep. with creative flow. Yep, and yep. you only ask for critique from people you trust. Correct, from people you trust and from people who you know have your best interest. Um, and and I think, not to beat a dead horse, but 
connections for me is, is the ultimate goal. And so when I'm going through my process of idea, script, production, uh, publish, uh, I always ask myself, uh, will someone resonate with this? Will one person resonate with this? Whether they're going through tough times or whether they just need uh, uh, a moment to chuckle or just learn something, that's what I ask myself. And that's what allows me to go through the creative process in a way that it makes it, makes it bigger than I'm just putting out a video. Like I'm creating to connect. And, and, and that connection, where it leads and what happens, who knows. Um, I started doing something recently because I don't know if you've seen Mr. Beast. He started, or he didn't start doing, but he's been doing this, where he releases like these time capsule videos. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh, man. He records as... them. He records them like, Dude. like years in advance and he's talking yeah. to his like future self. And it's the funny, amazing. The funny thing about that is like I have a segment called Real Talk and it's doing the same thing, except it's not like, randomly dropped in on future me and said future me can go back and look at this and go damn dude like you you are really in your feelings here huh yeah like you know and, and i try to actively mention like what my subscriber count is and stuff because i want to gauge like my growth i want to gauge where my mind my set my mindset was at a certain point in my life uh. um but but yeah I, that's a, another thing for another day but yeah i think i think ultimately creative flow like that's that's, it's pretty interesting to hear your take on it and um, connect, connect with people, learn how they produce, learn how they think, learn how they approach an idea. And, you know, it gets you out of your own head because a lot of times I think as a creative, it's easy for you to like just get tunnel vision on something yeah. and, and not explore your boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because exploring your boundaries, learning, that's where the flow becomes fun. Yeah, it really does. When you start doing stuff that's like not comfortable and it works. When it's not yeah. comfortable and it works, you're like, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, it's, and yeah, it's, and, it's completely. And, and depending on your mindset though, cause I, cause I'm like, a, I'm like, I'm different in the sense that if it doesn't work, I will, I will beat freaking it. like, mm. I will beat it until it works. Wow. And when it's, when wow. I've, and when I've gotten it to work, then I know I can do it. Right. And, and then I can say, like shit, this wasn't worth it. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or I can say yes, I got this. I got this like trick in my bag now. So like, fast forward five or six videos down the road, if I have an idea that's similar, I can replicate it easier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 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 my flow, man. That's my flow. Um, no, I think that works. Yeah. And I think uh, I think that's a great segment. To, we're gonna come back on it because I think that's perfect to get onto um, burnout. Like, it, how f how far do you beat? Yes. Beat this idea into your brain or into whatever you're doing until you're yeah. like, ah, I'm done. You yeah. win. You win. Yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> so we're gonna get into that right after this break. Um, thank you guys once again for listening this far. We appreciate it, and we'll see you in a couple seconds. Welcome back. So the last topic we left you guys on was burnout, and we are gonna dive a little bit deeper into that. And Kevin was sort of in this flow talking about it. So um, if you can just remind the listeners and viewers just sort of what the two, the two listeners and viewers. I like how you said, yo, I got this intro and you threw it right to me. And I was like, surprise. <laughs> well, 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 the intro is like, welcome. And then it's like, Kevin talk. Oh, okay. Thanks, man. Uh, so, so yeah. Welcome back, um, and we are going to jump right into burnout because I really want you guys to hear uh, sort of what Kevin has to say about this because... <laughs> because... This guy, thanks, man. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I feel like because I touched on it in the previous segment, yeah. I got burnt out from doing videos. For anyone who's just kind of tuning in, I got burnt out from yeah. doing videos. I've been doing it for such a long time. It wasn't fun. As that's what burnout is. Is when stuff. Stu why? Stu why? Why just, would you? Why would you say you got burned out? Like what happened? What course of events? Do, and okay, so doing videos, you know, obviously you get into it. Everything starts off fun. You do it often. You try to get better. When that happens, you're doing it all the time. Then, yeah. when it becomes a job, I start doing videos for other people. So mm. when that that it gets very dangerous because then you're not. Sometimes you don't have creative control, which that's what 
you were doing. I was doing. I wanted to do videos to be creative. Mm-hmm. But when you don't have that and it's just for the paper or it's just for the money, it's like, okay, cool. When's, when am I getting paid next? When I, you, what do you want, sir? What do you want, ma'am? How do you want this video? And that's all it was. That's all it yeah. was. For us to, for like a good solid like year and a half, two years, that's all I was doing. Um, and then I got, yeah, I just got burnt out. I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I was really rethinking. I was like, should I go back to school? Should I do... I don't know. Should I should just find something else? Started doing photography. Ended up pushing me to love video again, just because it's it's not the same, but it's a visual creative. Yeah, that, it's so funny that you mentioned that. That it's and like, so, yeah. Sorry, go for it. No, so so in in the same line, I feel like I was in photos. Am I'm still a photographer, and um, there, there's the obligatory like contract client side of things where you just have to perform and deliver and there's the creative side where i need to do something that feels fulfilling to me and uh to prevent burnout what i've been doing is i've always allowed myself to aim for three to five like out of the box ideas that i haven't done it might lead me to fail but at least I tried. I'll learn why I failed and I can execute it better the next time. And, and those are the things I feel like my clients are hiring me for. And slowly but surely, even that creative process, I got a little bored with. And what I mean by bored is, like there's only so many creative things you can do with a bride in a wedding dress and a groom in his suit. And you know, there's only so many things you can do. So to keep the flavor a little spicy for me, because <laughs> I like things a little spicy. Um, it's so weird because, and, 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 and this is a good thing to sort of like segue into, because Kevin actually mentioned this in his last video, I believe it was, uh, where he mentioned the introduction of series. Series on your YouTube channel. So when it came to like sort of changing platforms from Instagram to YouTube for me, I quickly learned to prevent ver- blah, to prevent burnout on the YouTube front. I had to make sure that I consistently worked on something new. Yeah, something different, yeah. something that yeah. like will like push that creative boundary because you're like right. you know. And for you, it was doing videos like in yeah. general. Yeah, you know, visually, uh, you know about composition. You know about colors and sort stuff of. yeah you guys if you, get, you guys are getting married my man out here um uh so it's it has the same it has like the same ideas and techniques but it's like a whole it's completely different and and do yeah. you hate that like for me i hate when someone's like hey man you have a camera you're a photographer it's like uh, i'm doing videos right now and they're like yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, you're yeah. a photographer i'm yeah. like yeah it's a totally because when someone asks me to take a photo, it's like my composition goes out the window. Like you know right. what I mean? It's like right. I don't know what I'm I, doing. I try to I try to I try to make sure that like I implement my photography knowledge into cinematography. But just like you, how like photo made you fall in love with the video, video made me fall in love with photos. Ah, uh, it's yeah. so weird. No, it's, it's and it's and you say it's weird, but I I get it. It might be weird to everyone yeah. else, but I get it. I get it. Yeah, completely. And and. And along the way, along so and, and I think the reason for the uh, for him getting like recovering from burnout and me sort of like preventing myself from being stagnant, um, which is borderline burnout also. Um, I, I just had to I just had to reinvent myself, and mm. and and, yeah, I, yeah. and I learned I learned cinema I I learned editing. Um, after effects, all these extra things that people I hear way too often say, yo, that's all too hard, or yo, you're a professional, that's why you can do it. Like, I'm I'm not here to say like that sounds like an excuse, but really and truly, sounds like an excuse. It, yeah, it really like, does. It really yeah, does. Like there's there's nothing you cannot do if you just apply yourself. That's that's my mantra. Like if you can apply yourself, you can get it done. And uh, to 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 now 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 YouTube makes wedding photography fun and wedding photography makes YouTube fun. Yeah. So like it, it's weird. Like I was shooting a wedding yesterday, and in the middle of the wedding, like click 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 click, I'm shooting. There's like this down period where like everyone's gathering together and families are getting together, and my assistant's sort of helping out, make sure things are moving. 
but like a light bulb moment went off in my head where I said, oh, wait. Please like and subscribe cool? to my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good plug. <Well, laughs> could you can you imagine like in the middle of a of a ceremony? Hey guys, I got a YouTube second. channel. <laughs> can you guys like and subscribe to my channel? Uh, but I, I had this moment where I just thought, man, I can't wait to get so comfortable with like vlogging because that's something new that I'm teaching myself now. Like this Casey Neistat style vlogging, um, that I can actually bring you guys with me on a wedding day. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be Which, awesome. Like, I'm hoping I, I just, for that to happen. I, I, I just thought it'd be cool to like bring my personality on a wedding day without it being so like pish posh. Like, yeah, but mechanical. Bride, groom. Boom, yeah. Because boom, boom, boom. Yeah. that's how I am right now. Like I'm very mechanical and, and methodical, I should say, in my approach to wedding photography. Um, but I want to bring some some flair. So like flair. This is yeah. this is the gesture Ca-ca! for flair. Or, yeah, or, or a bird. A bird. <laughs> <laughs> um but but okay, so not to go too far off tangent, I want you to like elaborate. On that's your... what I yeah, that's what I feel like because you talk about it uh, doing different types of content. So he's talking about plugging in vlogging into his wedding day stuff, which is going to be a total, um, I guess, creative mind fuck because you'll you'll be putting stuff down. It's going to be super uncomfortable. It's going to be super yeah, uncomfortable. Man. Yeah, but. Man. You're already thinking, oh, man, this would be so cool. Not even just for you. It'd be cool for you because you're learning something new, trying it. But it'd be cool for us as viewers to be like, I've, you know. I've never I... seen a wedding from this perspective. Exactly. And, and like ever because it'll be from your perspective, the guy that we know. Yeah. So. Yeah. With like doing Ooh, stuff. that's good. Yeah, that's right? Good. So with doing stuff like that, for me on my channel, I do a lot of series for you guys that, that – may not know me but i can you can you just like drop like a couple of the series you do like, yeah so like what uh, it is and like what's the general theme of that series? I, I do feast I, I do a segment called feast friday where every or on fridays not every friday but on fridays i do like a a mukbang or a food review literally is just for me to go it's out a, and eat <laughs> like, it's 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 a mukbang for like all of us but realistically speaking i'm just recording me kevin's, eating <laughs> it's it's kevin's approach which is called feast fridays and it's i called just feast I, friday and that's it so yeah. dope so yeah, dope. so we, i just eat food um another series called sponsor me please and the main focus of that is just like I, i've always dreamed about getting sponsored and it's always a joke especially with like me my friends, and I'm like, I just want to be an influencer. I just want one sponsor. So the whole series is just me reviewing sponsor random you. stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it. Because after, after I get you. sponsored one time, I, that that series ends. Uh, you want to know some? You know some funny on the topic of sponsorship. I feel like, and, and this is like, if any if any potential sponsor is listening to this, the first sponsor deal I get will have the best like media package rate ever wow. because they because they will be locked into something that five ten years from now they're gonna be like mm, getting the most bang for our back bang for our back <laughs> getting the most <laughs> getting the most bang for our buck because because we invested in Jashim early on and so so guys hit them up hit sponsors up. out there whoever is my first sponsor i am gonna hook it up wow that's a 10-year contract that's a that's, decade that's that's phew, I promise. That's a that's a Josh Shim Jalal promise. I'm going for like um, the one year, ten day contracts. Yeah, just like stacking them <laughs> up. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So, so not to go yeah. too far off tangent. You, so, you have so, multiple uh, series. Yeah, multiple series. Another one. Uh, I I was doing. I kind of I cut that one. We'll talk about that after. But it's called ATV All Things Video, where I teach video production. Uh, another one, which is basically just me uh, green screening myself into TV shows, and and whatever. I don't have a name for that. That's yet. Uh, that's and then I actually took out all things video uh, last week and movies I acted in yeah yeah or extra I don't know or whatever yeah. yeah movies I acted in um and I have a new one called TNT which is try new things so I took out one and I replaced it I think it's important oh, to only have that's gonna be dope yeah so I I have I already have ideas for it which are yeah. kind of fun and interesting so for me, it's like I don't want to have too many series that people can't follow. They're like, oh, this guy just has like random stuff, which mm. I'll, I do. But they're all kind of, I don't know, group. There's a cohesive theme. Yeah, There's it's a, a cohesive series. Theme between, so yeah. like for me, my idea, I know I told you about it, but for anyone that doesn't know, it's like I treat my YouTube like my own show. 
And so think of like a late night show where they do carpool karaoke or was it hip hop rap battles or yeah. whatever. So my my late night show is my YouTube and I have different series that I have on um, on there. And if something doesn't work after a while, like I'll try it for a couple months, see the analytics. I'll take it out if it doesn't work. If it does. I'll keep going with it or I'll just try to reinvent my content. And I think that mm. helps with burnout because yes. I just being in the creative industry for so long, I know what happens is that you do it. It works. You keep doing it. It keeps working. You keep doing it. It works. You keep doing it. You get burnt you out. Know, y- yeah. You know what that is exactly? We as creatives work so hard to make a system that makes things easy. Once you create that system, you find yourself in a position where you're just checking off boxes. Yeah, and you're just going in a circle. And you're just, just doing the easy. same thing. So it's, it's weird that the first video we mentioned how we gravitate towards people who are weird. And again, for those of you who don't know, weird is a cool thing. It's not yeah. a bad thing. Um, it's somebody who has an interesting fact or detail about them that makes them a lot more interesting than the average person. Yeah, unique. And so, yeah, and unique. So weird is synonymous to unique for us. Uh, so we, as, as, as creatives, have, have worked so hard to connect with another creative so that we feel normal. Um, and, and so in the same sense, you, you work so hard creating content, um, and then you want to be as efficient as possible. You want to be uh, as, as professional as possible. You want to be, be monetized as quickly as possible. Whatever your goal is, you're striving for that, and the system you create gets you there but then when you get there you realize what was the point of all this like you've lost sight of why you started you've lost sight of what your creative intention was or what your purpose was and i think when you think about how a series or how another creative endeavor yeah can keep you from in keep you from staying in that stagnant yeah it keeps you on your toes right that's where you you want to feel that excitement of like like the first date all over again or like you know the the worrying about the mistakes is like as much as we hate it it's like that feeling when you overcome it you're like oh whoa yeah this is i did it yeah i did it that was was wild i did it (laughs) yeah Um, i love that feeling so that's why i create series and that's how i prevent burnout for you how do you go about it have you ever felt it and and if you have how did you like Funny enough, YouTube. I know. I know. We this, talked about YouTube. Well, well, it is YouTube. But like, funny enough, like you mentioned this like late night show thing to me, right? And obviously through like my YouTube research, and you know, they always say double down on something that's successful. Picking a niche uh, or like whatever. Yeah, yeah picking yeah, yeah. a niche and doing other things. Um, not saying it doesn't work. I'm. Sh- it does. Like when you focus on something, and there's that's definitely one way to grow. But to keep myself from burning out on YouTube. Um, I have, by the influence of this man right here, I have slowly created more series. Series that allows me to be in a position where, um, for those of you who don't know, like when I started my channel, I, was, I just wanted to create evergreen content because I wanted to um, focus heavy on photography. So I was talking about gear and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And after a conversation, it turned into, this isn't that fun anymore. Like me just sitting with the same lighting, same background and talking about a product. Do you guys want a mug? Do you guys want a face mask? Do you guys want a camera? Like like the technical stuff, while it was fun to learn about, it wasn't fun to present or fun to do. I get and it. That's, I get it. And that's when my like, you know what? Like screw the views, screw the likes and screw whatever happens. Um, along the way, I've met some cool people. So a community developed and I've learned to do what I like to do and the right people will gravitate towards that. Yeah. yeah, And so the more honest, it's honest, it's honest, the the honest people will come. And if you don't like it, then it's cool. Like, I don't want to have to put up a front. I don't want to have to put up a front. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, just cancel that series. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, so talk, talk to us about like why you would want to cancel a series, what it can do for you and um, like why that's important to do. Is that something we have time for right now? Or are we going to yeah, yeah. I, no, I think we. I think I can touch up on it in the next All three right. minutes. <laughs> okay. Very specific. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, two it, minutes fifty seconds. I love talking about video, and I love helping people. But from my perspective, and seeing analytics and what people 
actually liked about my channel, which is crazy, was like the f the food stuff, the green screen stuff, um, the storytelling stuff, all did so well. But the video stuff, as much as, as I was trying to help people, people didn't really want that from me. Mm. They're like, oh, I'd much rather be entertained by Kev than him telling mm. me about what lights to get. And I get it. <laughs> Even though I love it, man, I get it. And I don't know what's going to happen with that series. I could. The cool thing about it is I could bring it back later on. I could refine it. I could go back to the drawing board and be like, okay, let's focus on the basics or let's do this. Um, and that's why I would actually take out certain series. Or if I'm just like not feeling it, even if it's doing well and I absolutely hate it, I'm like, or I get tired, I'd cut it. Because right yeah. now my happiness is the most important thing. Uh, for me and for you guys, because when I'm happy making content, you'll you'll see it. You'll see, oh man, Kev is just enjoying what he's doing, and hopefully it inspires you guys to create content that you guys like, or at least be yourselves on camera without yep. feeling the pressure. Like if you are a sad person, be a sad person on camera because yeah. it's like it's who you it's are. You. It's you, and I'm I'm sure that people are gonna connect with it, um, yeah. see it, and that's just it. And the thing is, we all grow, so I feel like. If I just stayed doing the same thing, people that like my content initially might just get tired of it because yeah. it's like, because they grow as people and I don't expect you to stay. It's like for this part of my life, for these six months during the pandemic, me and you were really cool. And if that yeah. doesn't happen later, that's fine because I had and like- I'm going to cry. I, yeah. I, and I, it's sad. It's sad when you have those friends that, you know, just kind of dim and you're like, ah, I, I, my, 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 my friendship got demoted from- Real friends to virtual friends to who the hell is this guy? Yeah, who who is this guy? Um, Jay, so, uh, Jay, Jay, ja Jazz him. How, what, what's his name? Jasmine, again? Um, Jalil. <laughs> yeah, funny story about Jasmine. Uh, we'll get to that again another time. But the concept that Kevin just covered when he re when he relieved himself of ATV uh, in creative writing. ATV is all things video, video. All things, it? yeah, all things video. All things video, all things video. Which he he got very technical with his stuff, and I was a fan of that. I, I still am a fan of that because I'm learning cinematography. So the technical stuff like gravitate towards me, and I I always learn something from his ATVs. He cut it, but I'm here for his personality, and that's cool. But the terminology in creative writing is actually killing your darling. So as much as he loved it also, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I think you like I think you like creating those technical stuff at a certain point. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, he, he understood that the audience the audience wasn't gravitating towards it and he wasn't having fun making it. He was just having more fun making other stuff. Exactly. It's not that I wasn't having fun making it, it was I was having fun making other stuff because right. because well one, it's just real funny Refreshing. And, yeah and it's just real funny for me to be doing stuff like green screening yeah. myself into videos and yep. you know eating food and people actually enjoying it which is yep. which was weird at first and that's why you know and, and 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 that that i think is like a key component to preventing burnout and 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 the main purpose behind creating series is just staying innovative staying fresh and and just making sure you're always on your toes when it comes to learning yeah. and growing. And like being in that like I don't know, this weird feeling of like not knowing how things are gonna work mm. is kind of intriguing to me now. Like when I was so, younger, I was like it was uneasy. It was unsettling. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, like my stomach yeah. hurts. But yeah. now it's like, yeah, if this doesn't work, awesome. Like at least I did it. At least I should like right. I was like, you know, and if it sucks cool a lot of stuff in my life sucks like when yeah. i tried it for the first time it's like nothing new here right you know at least I mean? with this one at least with this one i'm having fun learning it i'm, yeah. I'm having fun learning through the process I think uh, that's but i think i think i think that's, we'll cut that off here yeah for sure i think, I think this is a good place to wrap up this episode guys i just want to thank you all so much to the early subscribers the early commenters we read everything yeah, so we appreciate if you do it, leave a comment um and we don't get back to you right away i promise you we are looking at it and we are going to get back to it or even address it in video form um thank you all so much for tuning in once again kevin and josh here podcast episode number three we don't know what it's called yet let us know in the comment section below Thank you all so much for why he's holding off on the peace side. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you all. For, thank you all so much for tuning in. Kevin, Josh, check it out. Peace. <sighs> what episode. up? What up?
What's happening? I, I like hearing people say that. What's happening? What's happening? Uh, yeah, how do you spell it? Was like, hat, 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 h